So, hello everybody and professor. My name is Mariah Kern Smelser, as you know. I'm here recording a example video for our final project. This, sorry I'm out of breath, just got done with the hard practice. I'm here in all of Harvey, home of the Panthers. Um, I play for semi-pro Chicago Breeze women's basketball. Check it out if you have a chance. Um, today I'm going to be discussing the skill of a hook shot. Many of you all know that the hook shot was created a long time ago in the NBA and it is a wonderful move that a lot of post players and a lot of guards can use to create their own shot and score over taller defenders. So before I dive in into this video, I first want to introduce the non-basketball players to the areas around the court. First we have here behind me the baseline. This is where normally we line up to run if we've gotten in trouble or if coach is trying to use, you and re use reinforcement with us. Um, uh, next to it we have the sideline, which is considered out of bounds if you go out of those lines. Um, over here we have the center of the court, which is normally where the game begins with the tip off. Two players go up, referee throws a ball up, and we tip it to get the game started. Next, we have here the three point line. In basketball, there are two lines, the black one being the line for the women shooting and the purple one being the one for the men. Here what I'm standing in is my favorite place. This is my home, the paint. This is where we get down and dirty, we get tough. Great defenders, great scorers happen right here in the paint. We have what we call our hash marks. This is where we do many drills at from different hash marks. But my favorite spot is right here on the block. This is where a lot of hook shots happen. Whether I'm facing backwards and I am going back to back against my defender or I take the ball and I'm facing up, there's multiple various ways that you can score with a hook shot. Right here is the center circle. A lot of offensive charges happen here. So when a player is attacking a big man or whoever is brave enough to take a charge will stand here and let the, the player fall right into their chest and will take a charge. So now that I've described the court to you, let's get into our move. So what we have here is our first hook shot. We coaches in the past and currently have taught me that when I get the ball down low, I want to first create space. So initially when the ball is thrown into me, I first want to jump to it and I want to chin the ball. This will create space between me and my defender. Nobody wants to run into your elbows, nor does if you reach across, that'll be a foul. So the first drill is going to be me showing you a baseline hook shot. You're going to come here, here, chin. You're going to take one dribble in. So one, turn two, here for the shot. This is going to get you away from your defender. You're going to drag them in. They're going to be defending your right side. So that's when you see them here. You can see with your peripheral view. You get them going here. You stay low. Drop this left leg. Come up and you're gonna simply come off two feet and extend your arm for the shot. So now that we've explained the baseline hook shot, which is very popular, now we're about to explain the middle hook shot. This is when you have a defender already on your baseline side. So if they're defending you on this right side, you wanna make sure that you stay low like again, jump to the ball, create space with your elbows, stay low, you're gonna take two dribbles. And while you're taking two dribbles, this is when you're gaining your momentum to go up and elevate over your defender. So, you're gonna grab one, two, here, jump into it, elevate, and close shot, okay? All right, everybody, so for my example of my teaching here, I have my great friend, my sister, my teammate, roommate, everything, Keandra Shelton. We've been going at it for about five years now, and we've been able to grow with one each other, work with one another, and just get better in everything that we do. 
Yes, and complete this homework. So, I'm gonna be showing her, demonstrating what the baseline hook shot to begin with. So, as I step out of frame, I'll be the one passing it to her. I would like her to jump to the ball. Again, step two, chin the ball. See where the defender's at and then attack with the hook shot. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. 12 seconds. Hit it. 12, 11, 10. Here we go. Here we go. Nice. Incorporating motivation is the best thing when training a player. When you give them motivation as they're completing their reinforcement, that's going to create willpower for them to continue being great. All right. Now, back to our thing. Here we go. Wow. Good move, one more, give me one more, give me one more. Here we go. Oh. Strong hook, strong hook. Nice, great job, Kendra, great job. All right, so now that we've completed our baseline hook shot, now we're going to go into our middle shot. Ready? Yep. Here we go. Two dribbles, elevate. Nice, very good, very good. You also wanna make sure, like Kendra demonstrated, that when she got to the middle, she broke her wrist. Everything is about the follow through. So as you can see her demonstrate, pay keen attention to that follow through. Here we go. Good job, very good, very good. Here we go. Nice. Nice. And here we have it, ladies and gentlemen. Those are the two most important hook shots in the game. All right, here we're gonna demonstrate a oncoming traffic spin move. This is when you are getting your defender off balance and you go in and you are maybe going against two taller players. For guards, this would be good to get in in between their arms, or if you're a post player and you're attacking from the three-point line, then this will grant you the speed that you need to attack those players with aggression. So here we go. Here the player is demonstrating an ongoing spin move with the left hand hook. Notice how I elevate off the floor Perfect. and finish with a proper follow through. Yeah. All right class, so I'm going to be simply teaching you what freezing the degrees of freedom actually means. In this particular skill, this hook shot, there's multiple points where we freeze our joints in order to be able to release our momentum in our body going into that, finishing that skill. So for instance, when I'm going to do a stationary, typical middle hook shot, I'm going to one, chin the ball. That's right here, freezing my biceps. I'm grabbing the ball and I'm chinning it. Next, I'll be using a pivot tactic to get to the middle. That's now dropping this outside right leg, dribbling twice, and again, freezing my joints in order to lift my body up over the defender. So I'm gonna give it to you slow, and then I'm gonna go fast. I'm coming here, one, two, big side over, three. Last thing I wanna point out is breaking the wrist. That's the last point of joint freezing that we wanna make sure we focus on. Because if you go up and you just shoot, there's no direction, my hand's pointing up. So when I freeze 
my wrist joint, that's going to make sure that I have the direction going into the hoop. So we'll go here. And forgive me, my left hand isn't as strong as my right hand, but I'm working on it. Again. One. Two. Buckets. All right, class, so as I mentioned earlier, there's two types of reinforcement, it's positive and negative. Earlier we gave you an example of negative reinforcement, so now we're gonna give an example of positive reinforcement. Great. So reinforcement is usually, well, positive reinforcement is usually like a, some sort of token or reward. Like say for instance, Mariah made all of her layups in the game, so I rewarded her with a trophy. Today we don't have a trophy, so today we're gonna to use a water break as a reward because it's getting hot outside. Like today it was 93 degrees and the gym felt like 93 degrees yes, as well. So I'm gonna reward Mar Mariah with some water. Thank you, coach. I truly appreciate it. And it makes me wanna go back out there and work even harder. Good job today, champ. And also, we like to mention that with positive and negative reinforcement, neither one is a punishment. It's reinforcement. So Motivation. it should be motivating you to excel higher or be more successful in whatever skill that you are trying to complete. So for instance, like Kendra mentioned, if I had made all my, my layups in a game, that will teach me to next game, go even higher. And say that I were to miss a layup, or say I were to miss the rebound, my mark of rebounds, then maybe a... You could come back to practice. Yep. Use that same negative reinforcement. Say you missed your layups in the game. You count it. Say you missed like three, so you came back in here. You did like three, three down, down and backs, backs. three suicides. 30 push-ups. Running. Yep, exactly. Like, so, like those types of things get, your, get you mentally tough to, to, not, to make you want to not make those same mistakes again and make you want to go harder mm -hmm. and be better, like give a better performance than what you did last time. Like it's important to know your numbers. Like if you know your numbers, you can grow your numbers. Exactly. So that's what that's the role that reinforcement plays. Yes. So and remember, it's not a punishment. Just something to get you better. Thank you so much for tuning in. We appreciate you. We hope to see more from their classmates, our classmates, and uh, we wish you well on your rest of your semester. Finish strong, guys.